Hello. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Heisenberg picture. So, in the first part of this course, we looked at uh, what's really called the Schrodinger picture. That is, we were describing the system in terms of wave functions, and these wave functions had a time dependence to them, and they were acted on by operators, such as the Hamiltonian, which were themselves time independent. So in the Schrodinger picture, we had time dependent states uh, acted on by time independent operators. Our states we wrote as the wave function psi of x and t. I'm just writing it here as a ket uh, psi, which is still a function of time. In the Heisenberg picture, we have the following. Time independent states acted on by time dependent operators. So um, there are two fundamentally different ways of looking at quantum mechanics, which were come up with by Schrodinger and Heisenberg uh, and others uh, at the same time. So Schrodinger's picture has this format uh, and he was thinking of everything in terms of um, uh, an extension of classical wave theory. Whereas Heisenberg was thinking of things uh, in uh, using this format and was thinking of things in terms of non-commuting matrices uh, and their infinite dimensional counterparts as operators. So it was later that year, uh, shown by Schrodinger, that the two pictures are completely equivalent. So um, the mathematics of one or the other may make certain problems easier to deal with. We'll look at some problems in this video where the Heisenberg picture is the more natural setting. Um, but the two can always be interchanged. And in fact, what you have is you have your complex Hilbert space. Uh, it has states living in it. Um, and you want to carry out procedures which are going to transform you from one state to another, just like uh, acting matrices on vectors to switch them to other vectors that live in the same vector space. So the question is really just one of active versus passive transformations, just like you can either rotate your vector and keep your coordinates fixed, or you can keep your vector fixed and rotate your coordinates. Um, that's really the, the fundamental difference that's happening here. So it's not a physical difference, it's a mathematical one. So within the Schrodinger picture, we have time dependent states. So let's label them psi, psi subscript s for Schrodinger as a function of time. But we know that psi s of t uh, is nothing other than psi s at time equals zero acted on by this unitary operator um, e to the minus i Hamiltonian times time divided by h bar. So we've seen this in the previous video, but really um, you can think of, uh, just think back to the time dependent Schrodinger equation, and remember you can separate that equation, it's a separable equation. The time dependent part really just tells us this. In general, we would have this h, uh, sorry, in the specific case we looked at before, we'd have h here would be the energy eigenvalue uh, solving the time dependent Schrodinger equation. But totally generally, if we don't want to work with energy eigenstates, just arbitrary states of the Hilbert space, uh, this is the Hamiltonian itself. So this is an exponential of a Hermitian operator, but um, it's still just an operator. You can think of exponentials of operators or exponentials of matrices defined in terms of their Taylor series. So it's an infinite power series uh, in terms of the Hamiltonian. Uh, and then this quantity is what's called unitary, which you may recall means that um, Ketz preserves their inner product. So uh, a convenient choice to take to relate the Schrodinger picture to the Heisenberg is as follows. Let's define our time independent um, Heisenberg cat, our state psi subscript h for Heisenberg in the Hilbert space. Let's take it by definition to be the Schrodinger state uh, at time equals zero. Um, and then uh, other choices are, are completely fine. If we were to pick some random time, 10 seconds instead of zero here, uh, all it would do is multiply this by a, con uh, a complex phase uh, of unit magnitude because of this. Um, but if you multiply the state by uh, some unit magnitude complex phase, well, that's just the global phase of the wave function. Uh, the wave function in this case uh, being the, the ket or the state here. And if you multiply the state by a global uh, phase, it, it doesn't change anything physically, as we know. Global phases are unobservable. So let's choose this one by definition. Uh, it's just a convenient choice. Uh, this gives us the following relation. Just combining the, uh, the equations, we have that the um, time-dependent state in the Schrodinger picture is just given by e to the minus i Hamiltonian times time divided by h-bar, 
all acting on the time independent Heisenberg state. Okay, so for uh, operators we get this relation. The time dependent operators in the Heisenberg picture are just given by the time independent operators in the Schrodinger picture, um, pre and post multiplied by these unitary operators. Um, and this structure preserves uh, expectation values. So let's take a look at that. So um, the expectation value of an operator A, uh, let's label it subscript S for now to say that we're in the Schrodinger picture. There's n equal to this. We, it's just uh, the operator, which is time independent, sandwiched between the states uh, psi, uh, which are a function of time. But we can write that as follows where uh, I've just taken the state psi in the Schrodinger picture as a function of time and written it as the unitary operator acting on the time-independent uh, Heisenberg state. Um, and I've done the same for the uh, Hermitian conjugate over here. And then the Hermitian conjugate of this unitary is, is this, where the minus sign has disappeared. But then we just see that this quantity here is nothing other than the time-dependent uh, Heisenberg operator and so we can write this as so uh, it's just the expectation value written in the Heisenberg picture and so what this tells us is that whether we work in the Schrodinger picture or the Heisenberg picture expectation values are the same and of course that must have been the case because expectation values are observable quantities and they shouldn't depend on our mathematical description. So let's return to our uh, Heisenberg operator as a function of time uh, defined in terms of our time-independent Schrodinger operators. Um, I should say, uh, I'm assuming here that the Schrodinger operator has no time dependence. We assume that throughout the course. If you remember the, the uh, one of the introductory videos, I said that our operators are always time-independent here. So our potential, for example, is always time-independent. You can have an explicit time dependence, uh, even in the Schrodinger picture. Um, it doesn't make things too much more complicated, but we're not going to consider that case uh, within this course. So these operators are always time independent, and the only time dependence in the Heisenberg picture is coming in in this form. And so uh, we can evaluate the following. We can look at the uh, derivative of this operator with respect to time. And we know that the only time appearing in this expression is here and here. And so we find the following. So uh, we act first uh, on uh, this part. We bring down an i h over h bar. Uh, this commutes with this because the exponential of this Hamiltonian operator with its prefactors um, is uh, only a function of the Hamiltonian. The Hamiltonian always commutes with itself, and so it commutes with any power of itself, and so it commutes with the exponential of itself. So this could have been written here if we liked. Um, the other terms repeat. And then over here, we've acted the time derivative on this part. So we get the same thing. This h can equally well go over here, but it can't go over here because uh, h and the unknown operator in the Schrodinger case, or the unspecified operator, it, we would know it, it's just we haven't said what it is, uh, these two probably won't commute and they may well not. So it must stay to the right of a s. So if we look at what we have here, this thing here is just um, a h of t by definition. Um, here we bring the h over to this side and we get uh, a h again, giving us this, which we can rewrite as follows, where I've multiplied through um, by uh, the h bar and the i over here. So we've just got uh, i h bar dA by dt is equal to the commutator of a and h. And this fulfills the role in the Heisenberg picture of the Schrodinger equation. We call this the Heisenberg equation of motion. So it's fulfilling the role of the time-dependent Schrodinger equation.